previously in the Tour of Connecticut. Scale of 1 to 10, how much are you loving this? Zero. On June 27th, we embarked on the last day of our journey through some of the busier sections of Connecticut. The ride will go from Middletown through the towns of Wallingford, Naugatuck, and Southbury, to name a few, then end at our home in Danbury. Good morning. This is the last day of our bike packing trip. Oh, uh, I think it's day seven. I could be wrong, or day six. I can't remember how many days we've been riding. Uh, we are heading home now, so that means we are riding from Middletown, which is the small little city that we're in, and heading over to Danbury, which is about a 70 mile ride with a little over 4,000 feet of climbing. I'm guessing probably closer to 5,000 feet. Um, the forecast, if you could see, overcast today. Uh, there is go a chance of thunderstorm at around 11, and that's what the um, weather.com is showing. Uh, so we might get caught in some thunderstorms but that's, that forecast is actually for Middletown, so I'm not sure if there's going to be thunderstorms rolling in uh, where we're headed. So a little uh, moderate rain, it said, um, about 60%, the highest 60% uh, chance of rain. So there's going to be rain in and out um, that come, you know, that'll be on and off. So it'll be a little cooler, much cooler than yesterday. yesterday uh, it was pretty hot. I actually woke up feeling pretty exhausted, not from the ride itself, but just being out in the heat. Um, there were times where um, when we were on the rail trail, uh, we did have shade and that really helped and we got some headwind and uh, I never thought I'd like headwind, but that was actually pretty helpful in keeping us nice and cool throughout the ride. And hopefully we don't get caught in thunderstorms because I feel like we're pros at getting caught in thunderstorms now a couple of times already that we've been uh, in a thunderstorm. Oh, my legs. I feel like we always start off on a fly. Yeah. As we began our ride, we noticed the clouds starting to look grayer and grayer by the minute. We saw some drizzle on our sunglasses, and not long after that, Joy decided to put on her rain jacket, but I decided I was more comfortable without it. The road seemed busier than in the past few days we've been riding. Not sure if it's because of the weather, the day of the week, or the route itself that took us through slightly bustling towns. We were used to riding on quiet roads in the northern parts of Connecticut. Clear. We approached the busy intersection with a stoplight. When we hit the red light, the rain began to pour even harder. Oh man, coming down now. We're good. Since Joy had her rain jacket on with a hood, she had little problem seeing what was in front of her. I, on the other hand, struggled just to see what was even a few inches in front of me because the water splashed violently into my eyes. Turn right. I, I'll get in front. My rain jacket did not have a hood, and at this point I wished it did.
Joy had the idea of riding in front so that I could follow her rear light. My Senna speaker also decided to malfunction during this time, so combining that with the lack of visibility made for an interesting ride. We made it to a town called Prospect. Here we hopped onto the Larkin Rail Trail, which will take us to Southbury. onto the Larkin Trail. Thank goodness you can see from behind me what it looks like. It's a bridal path that will lead us to Southbury and from there we'll be getting close. I think we'll be 20 miles away from home. So getting close 33.7 miles and we have 36 miles left to go. Oof and it says 3400 feet of climbing so I'm not sure how accurate that is. Um, well, there is going to be some climbing coming back because it's hilly where we are. Okay, um, still in pretty decent spirits. Uh, it drain drenched on us um, at mile <coughs> mile ten. It started to downpour on us, and uh, couldn't really see. Unfortunately. Well, fortunately for me, I brought my rain jacket with the hood, and so I had that drenched, I had the hood up over my helmet. And actually that helped me to be able to see from ahead of me because the water wasn't getting into the vents and uh, getting into my eyes. Unfortunately for Jason, he brought the Rafa rain jacket, which doesn't have a hood, and so he had a hard time seeing and so I went on the front and he was able to follow the blinking red light, my blinking red light from my, uh, from my bike. And he was able to follow that. But, you know, I, I, I totally get it. When we did the farmer's daughter gravel grinder and it downpoured on us, it was really hard to see. And uh, it, even if like, even if we just wipe our eyes, it's hard to see um, ahead because the water just splashes all over your face. So um, I think in the future, definitely invest. Uh, I'm gonna have Jason, he's gonna probably take his uh, rain jacket with the hood on, I, although I think I may have suggested that to him in the beginning. Um, also, the uh, Senna Bluetooth, mine works. Jason's, for some reason, stopped working. And I think even though it is waterproof for some reason, I guess something happened where when he was drenched, since he didn't have a hood on, it got the um, stuff wet. And I'm not sure if that's the reason why it stopped working, but that's just my, um, my take on why it stopped working. Um, unfortunately, we can't communicate with one another on the busy road, so it was really hard to talk to each other that way. Um, so yeah, at least with the roads, with this trail, um, it should be fine. Uh, with this trail here, it should be fine. And uh, once we hit the main road again, uh, we are familiar with that road. So um, 
you know, it'll hopefully be a little easier. All right. We underestimated the conditions of the trail. Joy thought perhaps this would be similar to the airline trail, but many sections of the Larkin Trail were not comparable, which was a disappointment. Parts were muddied and there were some sections that were riddled with river rocks. Their smooth round edges made it impossible to ride on because it was too slippery for the tires. Because if I can, if I just brace it on my shoulder, then I have my other hand to like grab onto stuff. Oh, mosquitoes. At one point, we encountered a crossing that had us carry our bikes up on a rock-strewn path. Thanks, honey. Are we staying on the trail? Uh. I think we are. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we go down there. Yeah, I don't know what that one looks like. Car up. On another crossing, we decided to walk our bikes because we could hear the busy traffic that ran parallel to the trail. Once we got to the crossing, we encountered fast-moving vehicles and wondered if we could ever cross safely. I was gonna go that way, but you know, is it over there? What about over there? Yeah, you would think so if it says Larkin Trail. That must be it. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yep. Then the unthinkable happened on the last day of our trip. I got a puncture. I got a puncture? Oh, shit. Okay. Unfortunately, Jason, we got our first puncture here. Jason got a puncture uh, going over the rocks behind me. Uh, immediately I saw the sealant spewing out and it looks like it's sealed it's just that he lost a lot of air so he's just repumping it 
Hopefully we can get that sorted out and head out. This is what the trail looks like where we're headed and doesn't look like it is rideable on wet conditions. Now it's raining again, so seems to come and go. Um, yeah, so we'll just walk this section just to make sure that um, you know we don't have any more punctures. Yeah, just be careful. Uh, no, I think I can handle mine. I think we hop onto the road here. After several minutes of struggling to seal the tire, we were finally on our way. We used CO2 to blast some high pressure air in there and it seemed to have sealed for the time being. Finally the trail ended and we got on a paved road. Still got air. Oh good. Things went smoothly for a few miles, but then my puncture reopened. We're thinking the tire didn't seal properly due to the wetness. Uh-oh. The air came out of my tire. Yeah. It's like... I can't hear it, it's just... Oh yeah, it's squishy. All of a sudden. Super squishy. I th we went over like a bump or going around that corner. Yeah. And ever since then it felt squishy. I think it it must have like the puncture must have yeah. reopened. Right. Let's see if I can I don't hear anything. Honestly, I don't mind putting the tube in. All right, well. Since we're in, not in the middle of the woods here. Yeah. I don't feel, I mean, I feel. Well, um, then do your business first. Yeah. So if you can just, while I do that, can you just take off your, all the stuff that's on, including the rack? Yeah and flip your bike upside down. We decided to put a tube in the punctured tire, and thanks to my trusty bike mechanic, Joy, we were able to get back on the road again. You did? Well, I didn't do the proper. You still had your, your butt on the seat? I, I, yeah, I had my butt on the seat, but I went really well. I've been doing that a lot. Conserve energy. 
I didn't pedal once going down and up again. I just let my... I just let the bike go. I'll get ahead. Slowly, the miles ticked down. The 30 went to 20, then 10, until we arrived at our final destination, home. We're good. enjoyed this series please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the videos for more adventures. Until next time, don't forget to enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm.